Hello, I'm Dan Marshall. I'm here to tell you about Tandem Equivalent, what it is, and how to build your own. The problem which Tandem Equivalent solves is the need for couples of unequal strength to enjoy cycling together. The only alternative for these couples today is to purchase a Tandem bicycle, but there are a number of issues with Tandems. They're expensive, costing more than $1,000. They're hard to store. A bike rack for carrying a Tandem is expensive and hard to use. Once a tandem, always a tandem. By this I mean that if you have a tandem, you have to ride it with two people. You can't separate partway through your trip and ride separately for a while. The person on the back, known as the stoker, has reduced visibility on a tandem, and they're forced to use the same gear and pedal at the same pace as the captain. Tandem equivalent is the solution. Tandem equivalent is a simple tube which connects almost any two bicycles together, permitting two riders of unequal strength to enjoy a bicycle ride together. With Tandem Equivalent, riders can easily negotiate turns, shift gears, and brake independently. Unlike a Tandem, the rider on the rear has excellent visibility, yet the two riders are close enough for easy conversation. At the end of the day, it's easy to load the bikes onto a car using a normal bicycle car rack and store the tandem equivalent in the car. Compare this to a tandem, which requires difficult lifting of the heavy tandem up onto a specialized car rack costing $400 or more. One shortcoming of the tandem equivalent is that if the two bikes get out of alignment and the front bike brakes hard, there's potential for a jackknife. As a result, we prefer to put the more experienced cyclist in the rear where they can keep the bikes in alignment. Tandem equivalent is not advised for those who are under 12 years old or so. When going down long hills, we often disengage the tandem equivalent and go down separately. If the two riders choose to ride separately for a while, the tandem equivalent can be disconnected and strapped to one of the bikes in less than a minute. In conclusion, tandem equivalent offers many of the advantages of a tandem bicycle, but at a much lower cost and greater convenience. To make a tandem equivalent, the first step is to select a tube the cheapest and easiest material is one and a half inch or four centimeter ABS plastic sewer pipe. PVC is an option too, though it's just a little heavier than the ABS material. You can also make a tandem equivalent from colored acrylic and bamboo. Colored acrylic is nice because it looks spectacular. It has an almost electric glow about it. On the other hand, it's expensive and it's brittle. Bamboo is good because it's a renewable material and it's readily available in many tropical countries. You can see here that I've used another renewable material, hemp, to make the strap out of a piece of hemp rope. If you're working with bamboo, make sure that you drill the upper and lower hole and the strap holes on opposite sides of one of the bamboo knuckles because the bamboo knuckles are the strongest part of the bamboo. You'll have to choose your length. Consider five feet, or roughly one and a half meters, to be the standard. If you make it shorter, the stoker will draft behind the captain more, increasing speed. On the other hand, a longer tandem equivalent is less apt to jackknife. So making it longer may be better from a safety perspective. In the following steps, I'm going to be telling you how to drill the holes for the end of the tandem equivalent, which connects to the leading bicycles seat post. Of course, you'll need to do the same thing for the end of the tandem equivalent, which connects to the handlebar post of the trailing bicycle. In almost all aspects of making a tandem equivalent, precision is not terribly important. The forces involved in two bicycles are surprisingly small. You actually want the connection between the bikes and the tandem equivalent to be a little loose. If you make them too tight and precise, then something will break when one of the bikes falls over in the parking lot, for example. 
You're going to be drilling four holes in each end of your tandem equivalent. There's a top and bottom post hole, and then two strap holes. I find that holes about one inch or two and a half centimeters in diameter work well. You have a couple of alternatives for drill bits. A hole saw works well, or you can use a flat wood bit. The nice thing about the hole saw is that it starts out centered. If you're using the flat wood blade, it's going to start to wander. It stays in one place as long as it has this tip drilling. But as soon as that gets through, then there's no longer any steadying force and it's going to, the drill will start to wander. So what we do is we put a piece of wood inside a round dowel exactly the size of the uh, tube, the interior diameter of the tube would be perfect, but usually you don't have a round dowel that just fits inside a tube like this, uh, one and a half inches in diameter. So uh, we just use a piece of stick like this. Okay, so now I have one hole drilled and I'm going to uh, be drilling the other one. So now we want to figure out the angle for the second hole. So I focus on this edge of the hole and I'm lining that up by eye with the back of the seat post. And then I'm looking at the top part of the seat post and lining it up and I'm going to make a mark on the tube uh, where they line up on the top. And that will be the, the back part of my hole. The tubes have writing on them and I generally use the writing is on opposite sides. So I use that to line up the hole. So now I'm going to drill the hole, the second hole, lining up this edge of the drill line that I drew. Now we have our two holes, top and bottom. And the next step is going to be to cut uh, through the circumference of the holes. I find it works pretty well to use just a hacksaw. This is just a, an oversized hacksaw. A hacksaw is a hand saw made for cutting metal. Uh, you can use a power saw. Uh, a chop saw works well. I find with a, a metal saw cutting plastic, often the, the plastic actually melts. So it's almost easier to do it with a hand saw. So now we have two half holes on an angle, and they should pretty well match with the angle of the seat post. So the next step is going to be to drill a hole straight through here for the straps. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go up about four inches or nine centimeters from the distance from these holes to this hole. It really doesn't matter much. Uh, you can go pretty much as far as you want, but I'd leave a little bit of distance. Gives you space to tie the knot. Now we're gonna go straight on through to the other side. And there's a bit of a trick here. Rather than drilling all the way through the other side this way, you'll wind up with a cleaner hole. I went just a little ways through so that we wound up with this hole here. And now I'm going to uh, put the tip of the, the drill bit of the hole saw in that hole and finish it off. And now we've got a nice clean hole for the straps. The last step is to insert the strap through the strap holes and around the post. I like to wrap it around twice before fastening the buckle. Of course, rope can be used instead of a strap. Last, celebrate your accomplishment and try it out. If this has been useful to you, please consider making a donation to my PayPal account, tandem equivalent at comcast.net.